For at TV, the world is thinking. In the book I describe uh, uh, most of the day I spent with Joe, who was homeless and lived under a loading dock by the railroad tracks in Denver. I learned so much stuff in that day. And one of the things I learned is that homeless people need a place to store their stuff that's secure. And, and Joe told me that the bus yeah. station uh, would charge 75 cents, but when you go to get your stuff, they'd charge you 225, and they wouldn't let you have it till you paid the 225, and that was a ripoff, but the railroad station was safe, 75 cents a day. So there were two or 3,000 homeless people in Denver at that time. They earned each about 500 bucks a month. That's a pretty big uh, earning power. Why couldn't we start in an abandoned building a safe locker space run by homeless entrepreneurs? We, in fact, uh, a friend of mine who's a psychiatrist, who's the medical director of uh, Boulder Mental Health Center, uh, did an analysis of what the income was of chronically mentally ill people living in the streets uh, and what they spent it on. We learned that uh, they had five or six hundred dollars a, a month in disposable income, some more, and uh, they had a lot of other goods and services, and one of those goods and services, many of them who were mentally ill, spent a significant amount on medication. So we started a patient-owned pharmacy, uh, which earns uh, about a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, but we had to learn the rules about how to buy drugs in volume and how to get paid third-party payments and so on. Uh, I've done the same kind of thing in the Navajo Nation uh, and in, in uh, uh, rural areas, uh, the San Luis Valley. Uh, so there is tremendous application in poor urban areas and in poverty in rich countries. Let me close with the three, uh, one of the, it's actually 12 practical steps to problem solving. This was, uh, this came about because the editor of uh, the book company, Barrett Kohler, which is in San Francisco, a, a, a guy named Steve Piersanti, he was a, he is a superb editor, and he said, look, if you learn anything over the past 25 years, how does it apply to all practical problems? And I thought that that was hokey, but the chapter I wrote called 12 Steps to Practical Problem Solving is one of the best chapters in the book. And it starts with the first three steps as follows. For any social problem you're facing in any country, start by step number one, go to where the action is. Step number two, talk to the people who have the problem and actually listen to what they have to say. The second part of that is harder than the first. And the third is learn everything there is to learn about the specific context in which the problem takes place. If people followed those three simple steps, we'd be in, in a very different place today in many problems. If some of the people at the World Bank who make central decisions about poverty and other things actually went to the village and spent a long time talking to poor people uh, they would uh, change the way they provide help.